How's it going guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to another Locals feature match. We have got Altergeist versus Dinos and uh, by the time you're watching this, uh, all rounds 1 through 4 from this uh, Locals, which I believe took place on October 31st, um, you know, which are all these rounds will be uh, from these upcoming four rounds. Um, all of them should be available early to members, excluding this one, obviously, if you're watching it public. Um, but the rest of the rounds are available early. Uh, so if you are interested in seeing some early content, early videos, early behind the scenes stuff, uh, consider checking out, uh, you know, becoming a YouTube member by clicking the link down in the description or that blue join button down below, uh, just below the player. Um, because there's lots of cool stuff uh, that you can see on a regular basis, um, you know, just by coming a member. So definitely check that out if it's something that interests you. And it's also a great way to directly uh, support the channel. So Alter Guy starting with Extravagance, setting four, really not finding too much of a play. Dino really not finding too much of a play either, other than just normal summoning that Wind Barrier statue. In setting two, um, and not attacking with the Wind Barrier, probably just wanting to keep it as safe as possible and really not risk the, you know, the, the proverbial biscuit, as it were, uh, by attacking with that, uh, you know, Wind Barrier statue. So he will just... Leave it there and uh, pass it back to Altergeist where he'll find another Pot of Extravagance. Um, at least he'll get to fire off two in a row, essentially resolving Pot of Greed both turns. And then finding a Marionetter and uh, debating on whether or not he's going to use the effect, which I believe allow him to uh, set a trap card or activate a Altergeist trap from the deck. It has been a little bit of a minute since I played against the Altergeist deck. But it looks like the effect is not going to resolve because of a Forbidden Droplet discarding the Animadorn Arcosaur to the graveyard. First Dino card we're seeing here. And uh, that's also importantly going to have the attack of Marionetter, putting it to 800. And a little bit of a miscalculation coming from our Altergeist player here, looking back at the original footage. Uh, he did mean to enter battle phase to remove the barrier statue, but ultimately forgot about the other effect of dropping, you know, the one that halves the attack. So he will suffer a 200 life point loss there, and his Marionetter, unfortunately, will hit the graveyard. And uh, that's going to do it for his turn after he sets one more back row. Now, can our Dino player find a play? Um, it's going to be a little bit, you know, hard, uh, hard pressed to do so, mainly just because he has that wind barrier locking him out of plays as well. Um, but he's not going to be able to do anything to out his own barrier statue, and it's going to pass turn over to our Altergeist player, who looks like he had an ash in hand and a Kunkiri, not much else. So he'll pass turn as well. Dino player is going to find a fossil dig. That's going to get met with ash blossom, so... No real chance of getting off the ground just yet. He'll take definitely at this point, if you're the dino player, just any dino normal summon, whether it be Oviraptor or Mist, just to apply more pressure in the battle phase. Um, but he's going to pass there after the Ash stops his one line of play. Now we're passing it back over to our Altageist player, who's going to get things started with Crackdown. And he's going to steal uh, the Wind Barrier. And we're going to see a Tribute Summon of what has to be Altergeist Conquery, because it is a level 5. So outing... The Wind Barrier statue in a very interesting way, unconventional way, but nonetheless doing the job. Let's just hope, if you're the Altergeist player anyways, that just didn't open the floodgates for our Dino player. And unfortunately, you hate to see it. Lost World Oviraptor, but we do have an infinite impermanence uh, to what would hopefully break, uh, you know, otherwise a chain block. Since that targeting effect that comes from impermanence is so, so underrated because it does get around chain blocking. Because we'll see that token come out regardless. But we saw him burn an ash on Fossil Dig the previous turn. Will he have an ash for an impending baby Sarasaurus uh, that we might see? Uh, the you know, Lost World uh, is going to be able to destroy it directly from the deck. Because why not? <laughs> Dino is one of those decks that I feel like if, if my banlist video hasn't gone out yet at this point, it should be very, very soon. But Dino is one of those decks I feel like has gone... Unscathed on the ban list for a little too long. This is an extremely powerful, extremely consistent, and uh, uninteractive deck at times because of cards like Miscellaneousaurus. Um, definitely should 100% uh, be addressed. So we're going to see an, one, uh, like a 9 billion IQ play here. The battle phase is going to be stopped via that uh, Mirror Force, so he will not get to trigger uh, Lost World's effect you know, in the battle phase like he wanted to, but he's going to Gamma Seal the set Conquery. And then on that summon, we saw the Torrential Tribute, 
uh, go off to, you know, <laughs> to, to, to clear, at least attempt to clear the token. And that's going to summon out uh, Panker Tops off of the Petty Ranadon. So, a bit of an uncon we're seeing some unconventional plays here. We're outing Wind Barrier Statue by Normal Summon Conquery, which I don't think I've ever seen in all my times of doing uh, commentary over Altergeist. And we're seeing Kaijus being used to trigger Torrential Tributes. Very, very interesting stuff. So, Altergeist now getting started with the Normal Summon of the Silcoitus. It looks like he's going to get Trigger Happy and fire off that Pankratops. And uh, Compulse being activated to remove the token. Pankratops might have fired off to try to destroy the token uh, to get some more advantage there during his turn. But it looks like he will not be able to destroy the token ultimately because he did get returned to the hand because of Compulse. So that'll do it for our Altageist player's turn. Hopefully he has something there in the back row. Otherwise, that Sulcoitus isn't going to do too much against the Dino Barrage. The Giant Rex starting things off in the normal summon to get the token on field. And to make you know matters worse, how about an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno? Just because you have you know a Dino and a non-Dino in your grave. Just how about get it for free? But wait a minute, plot twist. It's not UCT. It's even better in this particular scenario. It's over Tex Coatlas. Able to negate spells and traps. At any given moment is pretty nice as well, but you know we can't argue the uh, the oppressiveness that is UCT at, at at times. The card is very very absurd, but I hope Miscellaneous Source goes to zero. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna mention banless talk about dinos uh, anymore in this video, Miscellaneous Source is such an extremely problematic card. I really I really can't say it anyway else there's just no other way of looking at it it's just such an oppressive card not only is it an extender but it just removes all interaction uh from the deck as well and assembles some of the most absurd boards that you could possibly do and we're seeing uh said board trying to be assembled right now we're seeing the battle phase uh being used to the dino player's favor to be able to not only get a uc or to get obi raptor to the field but we're also seeing it to use to get Pankratops get back on the board as well. And uh, not only that, we're also seeing him get to search UCT. Um, so, so much advantage being generated here. And we're not even seeing Miscellaneous Saurus this entire game. So, just make it so you can interact with the deck. Because these plays are all fine and dandy, but when you make it so they can't be interacted with, that's when the problem uh, you know, arises. So now we're going to see Tornado Dragon here get the Giant Rex to the grave, remove some back row in the process to make UCT live, and yeah, that's all she wrote for that one. Dino taking a commanding win there. And uh, as we head into game two, I'd like to mention a quick shout out to our sponsors over at Imperium Duelist. If you guys are interested in picking up some amazing playmats, sleeves, deck boxes, dice, binders, and more, you want to support the channel and get something out of it in the process, please do consider checking out their website at the link in the description. You can use my discount code WINNERKILLS10 off at checkout to save 10% off your entire order. And lastly, if you're buying anything on TCG Player, please feel free to use my affiliate link also in the description below. Anytime you guys shop and check out using that link, a small bit of the revenue from your purchase will go right back into the channel for cards obviously you'd already be buying. So. That's it for that. Now, getting back to the game, Altergeist going first, starting with a classic Malusik play into uh, the Link uh, Karibo and setting two. So, if you ask me, it's a pretty pretty standard play there. Um, about as standard as you can get, other than, like, you know, I don't know, what's Sangan for multi faker, but I don't even think they really do that anymore because faker is at three. So, Malusik will do just fine. So now we're going to see our Dino player start with a Lost World and then immediately follow that up with a Kaiju, Dogron to be exact, over top of Link Karibo. And uh, with it, uh, he'll get to generate a token from Lost World because it's just any time I believe a Dino is summoned. I don't know if it's any time a Dino is summoned or any time you just summon a Dino. Um... And then we're going to see Interrupted Kaiju Slumber attempt to try to remove the 
token to trigger that effect to get going or directly from the deck but ash blossom says no but then he's got a dark hole to follow it up immediately um so basically just played you know confiscation essentially by activating that interrupted kaiju slumber and it's also kind of a feels bad too because that slumber is just going to be uh you know big utility in the graveyard for the following turn because he'll be able to search out any kaiju from the deck and dark hole just doing the job it needed to do here to get access to ov raptor the lost world says if a dinosaur monster is normal special summoned yeah so it's just any time a dino is normal or special i was a little bit curious about that so we did a little research on the spot but now of course we're gonna see the uct being added to the hand off of ov raptor you hate to see it uct such an extremely good card now added to the hand no non-dino in the graveyard though but wait it doesn't matter because he's got it in the hand two dinos is all it'll take get that bad boy on the field has not exhausted the battle phase yet because he did have that nice little dark hole as a follow-up but we're gonna see what looks to be alter guy spoofing which is a great card to have here especially especially when paired with multi faker so multi faker getting summoned to the board now on the resolution of spoofing and we're gonna see the uh silcoitus get added or summoned rather my bad and then silcoitus immediately using its effect to return faker back to the hand to remove lost world and now it looks like we're gonna see spoofing put back uh, what looks to be either Marionetter uh, or possibly Faker, but looks like he's going to grab Kunkuri either way off that sort of quick change like effect from spoofing. Um, so now he's kind of uh, has a good way to not die here in the battle phase and also has a nice way to turn off this UCT, which is pretty good. But an important thing to take note of here, uh, he will need an Altergeist card to be able to use Kunkuri, but... Uh, he is going to flip up protocol on that attack declaration of the Obi Raptor. Um, so the Silk is still going to hit the grave because it will get destroyed in battle by Obi Raptor. But then we're going to see the UCT de declare a direct attack. And that is uh, when we're going to see the Konkuri hit the field. It reads, as when an opponent's monster declares an attack, if you control an Altergeist card, you can special on this card from your hand. If you do negate the attack, if this card is special summon, you can target one face-up card your opponent controls and negate its effect. So, it's also important to note that uh, that Silk did a pretty important job earlier by bouncing that Lost World back so he would not have access to the protection effect um, that it offers in terms of targeting, like making it so your opponent can only target uh, tokens. Um, or normal monsters. I believe it's just tokens. Um, but still, very, very clutch card to have there. Kunkuri uh, putting in some work and then going to use Spoofing uh, to put it back into the deck. Um, only if personal Spoofing was an Altergeist card. So yeah, once per turn, shuffle an Altergeist card from your hand or face of field into the main deck as cost to add one Altergeist monster. And it looks like it's going to go through and he's going to get Marionetter here. And we'll see if the marionette goes through. And it 100% is going to go through because protocol is face up. So that impermanence really falling flat there. I think our dino player may have forgotten about the lingering effect of protocol. Which saying the activated effects of altergeist cards, I believe on the field, uh, cannot be negated. But I guess it will turn off spoofing for the rest of this turn. Even though it's already activated and resolved. Um, so that impermanence, a little bit of a misplay there. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have forgotten about the uh, the lingering effect of the protocol. I know myself have, uh, you know, a, a few times done that. We're going to see the Dino token now get linked into Link Rebo, which is pretty huge. Getting that card off the field is great because now it allows you to basically target other things that aren't tokens. UCT, OB Raptor included, so... That's a pretty good step in the right direction. And of course, the battle phase protection, you can't complain about either. We're going to see him set an additional back row here, and that's going to do it for his turn. But there's that dreaded, interrupted kaiju confiscation, as we'll call it for this game. And the only reason I'm calling it confiscation because it forced the ash, and then he immediately had the dark hole to follow up. Um, so we're going to see now spoofing activate here. 
And that's going to go ahead and grab the Kunkuri, which he's in a really good spot right now because he's got Protocol up. Um, and once the Kunk hits the field, it'll be able to provide another additional Negate through Protocol. And then obviously the Negate uh, from Kunkuri in the Battle Phase Protection, you got Link Karibo. So right now, if you're the Altergeist player, you're feeling pretty okay. But you're not really feeling too okay about seeing that Fossil Dig Resolve. And grabbing another Obi Raptor because this could potentially lead to uh, something like Solemn Judgment or uh, you know a really powerful card like Evolza Dolka. Uh, Evolza Dolka. I can't speak. My God. My goodness. Um, and then <laughs> the impermanent stopping it. And uh, that's also going to shut off the back row of the Dino player as well, thanks to some strategic card placement. And on the resolution, we're going to see Faker, Imperm Faker, coming down here. Pretty good step in the right direction to help put our Altergeist player right back into this one. So that's a very, very good step in the right direction. Also, importantly, putting an Altergeist monster now on the field before he even gets to the battle phase. So now if that UCT tries to go off, he's got a way to negate it through protocol. He can just send off that multi-faker and then have the silk to bounce. So you can see how the wall, the Altergeist wall, is just slowly building here. Um... At the expense of our Dino player, but he's going to go into Tornado Dragon here. He's going to go right into Tornado Dragon. We'll see Tornado Dragon activate. Will it blow up the protocol? Answer, no. No way you're going to let that go through. You're going to negate the hell out of that card. Get rid of it. Destroy it. Get it off the field. And now we're going to see a Kaiju uh, getting over the Silk. So one interruption gone, but then again, you're still not feeling so bad because the... Uh, the Kunk is still in hand, and the protocol is still up. Uh, making it so all your Altergeist cards on field cannot be negated. He's going to try to activate Call by the Grave here. But uh, that, unfortunately, did activate in the same column as Impermanent. So our Dino player slipping up a little bit. But hey, these things happen, all right, folks? These things happen. It was Halloween. What are you going to do? It is what it is. But either way, we're going to see the battle phase commence here. UCT is going to attempt to swing in on the Link Karibo, and Kunk is going to come down to negate that attack, but he's not going to negate the UCT. I had to go back and again check the IRL footage. He does negate the Lost World instead. Um, so, pretty interesting choice there to negate the Lost World. But either way, he'll still take a thousand from the UCT uh, there, regardless, because it still will get to send, even if it is at zero attack. It was a defense position monster, so it will get sent regardless. Even, But it, I guess it is nice that the uh, the Gamma Seal can stick around. Nice 2200 body. Definitely can't complain about that. And we're going to see the Silt come out thanks to Manifestation and bounce that UCT back to the hand. Also recycling the Manifestation in the process. Or the uh, protocol, rather. My bad. Um, it's still, spoofing is still 100% up, which is so incredible. The longer the spoofing stays on the field, the better and better position our Dino player is going to get to be in. And it looks like the Silk now activating, bouncing Manifestation back to the hand to remove Lost World. So you're going to get that attack increase back. For, you know, the 500 attack and defense that he was losing from Lost World to get that back. Spoofing is going to resolve here to grab Marionetter. And Marionetter is going to go ahead and play, or uh, set rather, the protocol from the deck. I always forget whether or not... Uh, Marionetter actually just activates the trap from the deck, or if it just sets it, but it looks like it's going to just set it here in this particular instance, checking the graveyard. Still has, I believe, Faker in hand, and has Manifestation. So he's going to go into the battle phase and swing in with 16 and 22. That's going to drop him all the way down to 42, if the math is correct. He'll set one, and checking the graveyard one more time. Actually, it looks like... The Faker is in the graveyard. I don't think he actually has Faker in hand unless uh, that is uh, unless he had another copy because he did use uh, the uh, Faker previously uh, to send off for a protocol. But now we're gonna see here after the Lost World is played, we're gonna see Manifestation immediately bring it back, and we could probably ex uh, expect to see Silcoitus get summoned out here. I'm no Alter Guys expert. I could imagine that we'll probably get to see that card come out. Actually, we're going to see Malusik here. Malusik is actually not a bad card to get out of the deck here because if he does have a protocol, you know, he can send it off to negate a card and also get access to a surge. So, you know, we saw the UCT get bounced back to the hand, so it's no surprise that it's back now. 
and it's bigger and badder than ever now that there's four monsters on the opponent's side of the field we're gonna attempt to go battle phase and it looks like it's gonna go through that first attack so he's gonna take a whopping uh what would be 13 well actually gamma seals down by 500 putting it to 17 so taking quite a bit of damage there all of his monsters down by 500 um, so the Marionette are getting run over the faker not going to get run over Because of protocol or because of spoofing rather and that is going to basically just swap out with a another copy of faker To the hand and then we're gonna see Malusi get sent for a thousand and then Malusi is gonna trigger here to get another search so Altergeist seemingly up by a lot here in the resource game, but down by quite a bit in the life point game. A very, very productive battle phase for our dino player just there. And now we're going to see Protocol get activated, and that is going to trigger Faker in hand here. And now we can imagine, uh, well, no, no summon off that actually it looks like. And we're going to see him draw for turn. Looks like he picked up Awakening Dragon, one of the cards he probably sided in. And now we're going to see the normal summon of the Marionetter here. And that is going to use its other effect to send off protocol to revive the Malu Seek. We're going to see a Link 2 play here. I'm going to say, is there anything left of Extra Deck? But the double extravagance was the previous game. So, still has a full Extra Deck to work with because I don't think he's resolved uh, the, uh, the extravagance this game. Now we're going to see the... Uh, the nightmare cerberus get activated and uh that is going to importantly remove uct no miscellaneous source here so it's actually pretty cool that he gets to interact with this dino board um you know as easily to summon out uct is and the big boards that it can make it's nice to be able to actually you know interact with them and you know play the game of Yu Gi Oh. you'll love to see it so we're gonna see manifestation banish itself to add back the protocol we're going to set another card here and, you know, getting closer and closer to chipping down those life points from our Dino player. Getting him down to 2,000 here. Still a lot of room to uh, to catch up here, but that's going to do it for his turn. Starting with the Obi Raptor, you hate to see it, especially when paired with Lost World. And if I am correct, I think that might be his last Obi Raptor in the deck. Um, maybe top decked it, I'm not too, uh, too sure. Um, but uh, we're going to see him. Get the token, and we're going to see him send Giant Rex. And we're going to hope and hope that he doesn't have another UCT. But oh wait, he does. He's got another UCT. And he's going to go ahead and attempt to activate Giant Rex. He's going to say no to Giant Rex with Protocol by sending off the Marionetter. Now here, life point's pretty low. Our Altergeist player was looking like he was in a good position... Maybe not so much anymore at this point. You've got a UCT staring you down. And especially only having 200 life points left is not that good either. He attacks first with the OB Raptor. And because of Lost World, that will put Nightmare Service down to 11. So we'll take 700 there. And luckily, luckily, our Dino player has seemingly also forgotten about the Link Karibo in his grave. Using it to send off that Lost World token uh, to not lose outright in the battle phase this turn. And even if he were to, uh, per se, start by attacking the Cerberus with the UCT, uh, Link Rebo still comes out, gets rid of the token, and then sends itself off to drop UC to zero. Uh, and then he's still only dealing 700 damage there regardless. So our Altergeist player able to live one more turn, thankfully, because of Link Karibo in the graveyard. And he's going to start now with Marionetter. That is going to get a protocol from the deck. Although I don't really see how much protocol is going to help him in this particular instant. Um, maybe uh, maybe he's got something up his sleeve to kind of get him out of the position that he's currently in. Down by, you know, an 1800 life point gap here. And, you know, uh, seemingly no direct way to get rid of this UCT. But it looks like we're going to see the Marionetter summon out the Concuri from the graveyard. That's going to negate the effects of T Conductor Tyranno. Uh, for as long as these two cards are face up on the field, but he is going to chain Conductor Tyranno to that Because um, you might as well and that's gonna book both of his monsters and Seemingly no other cards in hand here his traps 
aren't going to help him out too much at all. And that's going to do it for his turn. And I'm pretty sure the writing is on the wall at this point. With only 200 life points left, all he needs to do is attack into that uh, any of the set monsters really to deal that final 1,000 damage. But a last-minute play happening here, flipping up Protocol, and then just using Spoofing to shuffle it back into the deck to change it out with another Altergeist monster. And uh, I really don't see which one he could add here at this point. It looks like, you know, if he potentially has a way to use Faker here, if he has Silcoitus in the deck, could easily buy him another turn, but... I don't think he does have another Silcoitus in the deck. Um, and even if he did, it's really only delaying the inevitable just because, like, I'm pretty sure he's got enough Dino Fodder in Grave Deal to put UCT back on the field again. But, yeah, as you expect, Dino taking the game there and also taking the match 2-0 in a very, very commanding uh, manner. So, um, yeah, Dino still a very, very strong deck. Um, you know, back then in October and still even more so now in November and December. Uh, hopefully the deck is addressed in some way, shape, or form in this upcoming ban list, uh, which I will be making a ban list video very soon if it's not already out by the time this video is up. Um, but yeah, I, I hope uh, Miscellaneousaurus does get the axe and go directly to zero uh, because that card just pretty much ruins the game in terms of interaction. Uh, completely just removing any interaction that you would have with Dino, uh, especially when you pair that with the ability for them to easily pump out insane boards, Doka, UCT, Pankratops, and Hand Traps to boot. Like it's just so unfair. You really can't afford to have a game like a uh, card like Miscellaneous Source in the game that is just removing your ability to interact with their boards whatsoever or stop them from being built. So. Yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Do not forget to check out the ways you can support the channel down in the description below. And again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, Winter Kill Santa. We'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, a huge shout out goes to our Divine Level channel members here on YouTube, Academic Thick, Zors, and Cadillacs84. Again, thank you guys so much for your continued and generous support of the channel.